Hi friends, welcome to the Plain Fun RC channel. I'm your host, Saul. We are continuing our build of the Experimental Aircraft Models RC Velocity XL. We're on. We're at the point now where we're going to go ahead and uh, mount the motor. Now, this is a unique way of mounting, I have to say. It's not an easy way either. Most manufacturers, what they'll do is they'll have center lines marked off. Now, what I've done is um, you can see we've got two lines in there. Now, I will tell you that that horizontal line that you see there, that is not a center line. That is a seam, and that is not an accurate seam uh, for uh, centering the motor at all. Now, that center line, though, is. I was able to determine at least the center line from a side-to-side -side fashion um, this way. But even then, that's not going to be entirely accurate because uh, they want you to use the cowling as a way of centering it. Now, on principle, it sounds like a great idea, but the problem is, is that if you don't have the motor cent cent uh, centered, uh, and for those that are experienced uh, RC pilots, you know what I'm talking about. Um, if the In this case, since it's a pusher, if the motor is too high, meaning this way, this is the top, this is the bottom, then it will cause the aircraft to pitch down whenever you throttle up. If the motor is sitting too low, it'll cause it to pitch up uh, when you throttle up. Uh, of course, and then of course, if it's too far one way, this way or that way, it'll cause the airplane to yaw left or right every time you throttle up. So nonetheless, we're going to go ahead, we're going to mount the motor using the cowling. Now, looking at our outrunner, the issue with this turnigy uh, is that while this is the mount here, and there are screws on the bottom that are supposed to uh, allow you to remove the mount. Um, you can't. I think they used a permanent Loctite, uh, lock thread, uh, Loctite, whatever you want to call it, on there because I can't get them off. So we've got to improvise. And the reason why we're doing it this way is if you look right here, you've got the wires coming out and you can see that they stick out from the bottom. So there's no way for me to put this directly onto the surface. I actually have to use some blocks of wood to lift it up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the fuselage, we're going to go through, we're going to get it so it's standing up on its nose, put the motor in there, put our cowling on, and just position the motor and center it in relation to this opening here. And I think what I'm going to wind up doing is going through and use a, um, a spinner here and that should help me to determine uh, the proper placement. So let's go ahead, let's get this started, and more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update of the in engine installation on the Velocity XL, uh, so let's talk about what you're seeing here. So in order to properly position the motor, you're gonna need to stand it up on its nose, put a little pad on the bottom down there, and you can see how we have the spinner on the actual motor temporarily, of course, to help try and center this up in relation to the actual ring where the cowling is, is, uh, is sitting. So you try to get it as absolutely close as possible. Now, if you look carefully down in there, let me see if I can get you a shot. You'll notice how we've got the mounting holes. Let me zoom in a little bit. We've got the mounting holes in an X pattern. And the reason for that is that if you look right at the top, see the holes there, the vent holes? If you don't put them in an X pattern, you won't be able to get it to fit properly. Now, perhaps if you're using a different motor, maybe if you're using, for example, the, uh, the Spectrum 1.20 Outrunner motor, uh, or maybe you're using one of the Great Plains mounts, it might fit a little differently. But with this motor, it has to be in an X pattern in order for it to fit properly. All right, so let's go ahead, let's carefully remove the cowling, mark the location of the motor, and hopefully we'll get this right. More to come. All right, friends, we've got the uh, holes drilled. The motor is not finally in installed uh, uh, entirely just yet. We still have a few more things to do. But nonetheless, we got it. Definitely took a while to do it without there being any markings. I will say the center line, the center line for the most part was helpful. You can see it right there, of course. In relation to the motor, it's uh, close. <laughs> but anyway, nonetheless, the big takeaway is that we've got the holes drilled. It wasn't easy. I'll tell you what I did, though. Um, I, I wound up actually, once I was able to center the motor in the cowling, 
I then went in and had some old wood screws sitting around and I took the wood screw, dropped it in one of the holes here, boom, and then to mark the hole, I just spun it with a, with a uh, screwdriver until it made a tiny mark. And that worked really well because I did not have anything long enough to, uh, to go through here and clear the motor at the same time. So this worked really well. And it's perfect. It actually worked out really, really well. You can see we've got all four bolts in place, just hold, temporarily holding the motor. But um, anyway, so our next step, we need to get our blind nuts in there. And then uh, we need to get some standoffs. Uh, because this is a, this really needs to be out even longer than those screws right there. So we're going to have to get some pretty long standoffs. All right, more to come. All right, friends, as we continue our update, we're trying to get the blind nuts into the holes. We've got one here. We need to put the one over here. But I wanted to take a moment to show you how we would get into, into here. Now, we can't access these holes from the inside because there's a fiberglass tube that goes through the, this part of the fuselage and therefore blocks the access to the holes. Furthermore, F2, which is the former that sits right in this area of the fuselage, uh, that also does not have holes that allow you to access these. So anyway, so what we're going to do, pretty straightforward. We have gone through. We have, we're using... Good old 3M double-sided tape. We take a little bit, we put it on our finger, as you can see right there, and we go ahead and then we put on the actual blind nut itself, and then we're gonna take our finger and go right inside the fuselage like so, give a little curl, and you can see how it just sort of fits over the hole in there. And then you just pass through a, 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 um, an 832nd, socket head and then just tighten it down until the actual um blind nut is sunk into the wood and there you go more to come all right friends as we continue our update here you can see we've got our temporary spacers in place uh, i'm not quite sure what happened here you can see the motor is not centered anymore uh, it's a little off which is disappointing i'm hoping maybe i just need to add a little extra spacer uh, maybe perhaps in the bottom left uh, mounting location to help sort of recenter it. Um, so that's a little disappointing. But nonetheless, let me show you what we use. I just went to the local hardware store and picked up some spacers. So uh, let me pull the cowling off and you can take a look and get a better view of what we did. And you can see we just picked up some one quarter by 20 spacers to go through and just to sort of get a, uh, a rough idea of exactly how, um, uh, how far out the engine needs to be positioned. I will tell you that with this motor, uh, the standoffs need to be 62 millimeters. Now these are about 66 uh, in length. But if you factor in the washer, more like probably about 67. So it does stick out a little bit more than what it needs to be on the cowling. But I'm not too concerned about it. I've got some great planes, um, extra large uh, standoffs that are coming. So once they arrive, we'll swap these out for the great planes and we'll get a better fit. And then, and then what I'll do is I'll play with it a little bit and see if we can go, see if we need to add maybe an extra uh, spacer right here to help recenter it. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, that's pretty much it. Just wanted to share that with you. So for the most part, the motor mount, uh, the motor is, is mounted. I will tell you that the length of the socket heads needs to be three and a half. These are three and a quarter inches. They need to be three and a half. So you can put a lock nut on the inside here because you never want to go through and um, whenever you mount a motor, it's always a good idea to make sure that you're using a lock nut on the inside so it doesn't vibrate loose. All right, that's it for that. We're going to go ahead and shift our focus to the inside of the fuselage. We'll come back to the motor in a little bit as soon as the, uh, the uh, standoffs uh, arrive. More to come. All right, friends, instead of moving to the inside of the fuselage, our standoffs have arrived. So we're going to go ahead and get those installed. They came all the way from Australia. If you're lucky enough to find them, there's the uh, product number. It's from Great Plains. And they came a couple in a couple different sizes. They um, You could get uh, um, large, extra large, and extra, extra large. Um, and they really are just a wonderful standoff set. One of the things they include is not only the set of instructions, but on the back, you do have a template there for a desert aircraft 50cc gas engine, and also the Rimfire 50cc and 65cc motor. <clears throat> now, I mean, let's take a look at what's in the box. Do a quick unboxing here. We, of course, have our blind nuts. 
we have our long spacers, and they have spacers of different uh, different lengths, and you'll see in a second. They also include a, a base, if you will, and the bases. One base goes on the firewall, and the other base goes on the back of the motor. Uh, we've got washers. We've got spacers here uh, of a shorter length. Additional thinner spacers, as you can see. And we have bolts of various lengths, as you'll see in a little bit. So here's the shorter bolt. The longest of the bolts. And uh, sort of the mid-sized bolt, I guess you could say. All socket head. And they include a wonderful socket head wrench to go with it. We've got some additional screws. Also a shorter length. And some additional thinner spacers, as you can see. For, and this allows you to get a very precise distance from the back of the firewall to the front of the cowling. And then finally some lock washers as well. Oh, and one more set of spacers. So it's a great set. I have to say, this is the only set I've ever seen that actually includes everything you need, which is really nice. Most places just sell the spacer and you have to go find the other stuff in terms of bolts and uh, and lock washers and uh, all the other stuff. So anyway, we're going to go ahead. We're going to uh, take a moment, take these off, put on the permanent spacers, and uh, and more to come. All right, friends, we have our new standoffs in place, and I wanted you to see the, the distance from the uh, uh, front of the cowling to the uh, front of the thrust washer, which is the black portion of the motor. It's a perfect distance. Let's go ahead. Let's take the cowling off, and you can see what the new standoffs look like. All right, friends, you can see our new standoffs. They look great. They fit perfectly. Really happy with it, and I'm happy that this is a, more of a solid piece through here. This provides better support for the actual bolt itself. Okay, so that portion is done. We just have to go ahead, put some lock nuts on the inside uh, uh, and the back portion of the firewall. And then after that, we're going to go ahead and shift our focus back to the internal portion of the fuselage so we can start working on getting our battery tray installed. More to come.